same attack, the shoulder lock. I'm using my legs to finish in a Kimura-like uh, submission hold. But I'm using one leg climbing. As you see here, everything starts the same. Foot on the hip. It's really important here that you fight against your partner's stance, okay? Stand up for a second here. I really put pressure there. I want to make sure that I have control over his arms. Regardless if his elbows are in, even if you keep your elbows in, my knees will always be able to sneak in. I want to climb that leg over the shoulder, not just place my leg there. I want to squeeze. See, everything I do, I have to make him feel pressure. Once I'm there, I get the knee bump okay, behind the elbow, and before he does anything, keep moving a little bit quick, I get pressure there, switch the seat, switch the belt. As he moves to get up, I stretch my leg, look. I do a big pressure, like flatting my leg. This is called the leg flat finish, okay? As you see, stand up. See, my legs are flat. It's a lot more weight for him to carry compared to keeping my legs coiled like this. While anybody can do it, okay? Anytime you feel though, I mentioned that earlier, if he gets his posture and lifts his shoulder up, go ahead, you bump your hip and aim your leg against, not the shoulder, but the elbow. That will always bring him back down. And a lot of times, with such an impact that you can hear right away, finish the submission, okay? As you see it, I had the sleeve grip for the entire time. Please do not make the mistake of letting go the grip. For some reason, a lot of guys will try to yank the shoulder out and keep pulling your arm out. You see, a lot of times you miss when you're at the edge of getting the submission. Go one more time, okay? real quick. So, if you are an instructor or a beginner, an instructor in the sense that you want to pass this knowledge on, or if you're a beginner that you don't have yet enough experience to grasp all the details, I'm going to go and break it down again one more time. I want you to hold both sleeves, okay? You're holding both sleeves. Keep a good grip. Don't worry too much if the guy's elbows are tight or something like that. All you want to do is, as you open your legs, create enough room for one of your feet. I usually use the left foot as my leading leg, so I'll choose the one I feel more comfortable, which might not be your case. But still, I want you to establish this control and think about his stance. Anytime he tries to get into a good posture, rotate your hip, move away, okay? Here, I want to get this situation here. Okay, I have my knees spread out. I chose, in this case, to do what we call the leg climb. I kind of get my leg over the shoulder, and once I put my leg there, I want you to see here the difference when I put pressure and when I just get your posture there for a second. See how easily he can slide? Go ahead one more time. Now here, do the same thing. Look how I sink my calf behind the shoulder. He has to carry my body weight regardless. Now, I'm gonna take care of the other arm now since I feel I have more control. I lift his arm a little bit, I slide my knee under and I bump. As I do it, I do a quick switch with my legs and with my hands at the same time. See that? And the more I face away my opponent, the better it will be for me, okay? What I have to deal with right now is one of the first things you're gonna see, get up again, get up again. He's gonna try to get back up. What I wanna see you doing is repositioning your legs slightly towards the elbow and put your legs flat on the ground. See how you, you kinda get the position here? And I want you to move your hip a little bit further out. Okay, so here, you see how more flat he is on the ground? I still maintain, remember, the grip on the hip, elbow pressure on the hip, grip on the sleeve, so he doesn't pull your arm out, okay, come on. See, I cannot allow that to happen. Pull again, pull again. See, I don't allow that to happen at all. Any release of the grip here will mean I'm losing the position. Now, when I want to finish, I redirect my knees. You see, my knees are out that way, now they point out that way because I want to sit up here. And as I sit up, I post my leg back because I want to generate as much push forward as I can. Once you're here, just a little bit of hip motion will give you the finish. Thank you, Frank.
attack in a situation when your partner stands up with a good posture. So basically, not only I want to maintain the control, but I want to be able to bring him down uh, without allowing him to escape his shoulder. And basically here, we're going to go over the basics right now. What is the key element on the beginning of the position? <clears throat> shoulder controlled by holding the lapel. I try to keep you know, control over his stance. And my hand, no matter where he, he starts with his hand, my hand has always to be inside, okay? always inside. I do not care where he positions his arm. I'm gonna have a grip on the lapel, cross lapel grip, and I'm gonna have my hand inside. And as he progresses into his stance, standing up, go ahead, I pull, go ahead, keep going. And he, as I don't know if you noticed, I already passed my arm through, <laughs> excuse me, I trap the arm, I push, as he goes for the, for the stance, standing up, to try to get out of the position. As I go here, as I switch here, I don't know if you notice that I will keep my legs tight, go ahead and break it, and I lift my hip with him, my elbow circles behind his leg, and then he grabs it up. Look how I actually circle behind him here. In the meantime, I let my leg get flat over his elbow, once he drops on the ground, I can actually sit up right away, but I finish the move by moving my hip a little further out. So once he gets completely flat, I redirect my knees, and then I sit up for the finish, okay? I'd like to take some time right now to go over the standing up part of the move, which is the most critical. If you fail to address that part, you might not be able to finish the technique. Here, I'm gonna go with Clay again one more time. So I have the collar grip, and I have my hand hidden inside his grip. No matter where he starts, like I said, I'm gonna go here, go ahead. I will combine the pulling of the lapel with the weight that he poses against my chest to kind of generate enough level as he goes go ahead to kind of beat the arm. See how my elbow kind of ties up here? In the process here, I'm pushing and I start to climb. I expect in here to fully resist. As you know, I'm already switching my grip here. And as he tries to stand up, I keep just posting my head on the ground. I still hang in there. Look my elbow here. Look how I kind of circle behind him. In the meantime, look my legs landing on the elbow. No matter how much he tries to keep his base, it's too much pressure for him to sustain. Now here, like I said, I'll try always to reach out for the belt. If I stay here for too long, he's going to actually follow up with a roll. Slow break. No, I'm sorry, Clay. Go ahead. See, go back again. Same position. So I'm facing away. I have the belt. Roll again. So I pull the belt and move away from him. A little observation. Can you see how his hip right now is elevating and I'm having a hard time getting him flat? We're gonna do here what we call the knee pivot. Go ahead, keep rolling. I position this knee on the ground. I'll post this knee on the ground. And I still have the grip here, control. And I actually post my, uh, I position my body right behind his hip. Go ahead and roll. See, I don't know if you notice here too, I still have the belt grip. Okay, so if at any point I was going for a flat leg finish, go ahead and start rolling. See, I post and I just kind of circle around his hip. And as you see here, I'm already redirecting and pushing my knee around his back. He's in a critical position here. He's almost like on the verge of tapping. And a lot of times I'll just pass my arm over, control his hip, and here, proceed with the position. Okay? This is called knee pivot. Once you feel the guy is gonna roll over, you have the belt grip, belt grip, sleeve grip, knee pivot here. See, and pivot, okay? So you can kind of follow up. Let's go again for the critical position one time. One, go ahead, keep going. Two, go ahead. See, I do a little bump of my hip, pass my arm through. As I go here, see, I'm switching, keep going. See, here I squeeze my knees, look. I'm squeezing my knees, I don't want his arm to go, I don't want him to change the angle. My elbow, I kind of circle around and I let my leg flat on the ground, already expecting him to roll as he lands. As he does, I pivot my knee and I'm circling behind his back. 
a lot of times we have what we call also the crucifix shoulder lock, which is a double arm control. It can be a, like a neck crank as well, but most often I'm aiming to get this arm here. It's already at that. Thank you. When you do the drill, I want to finalize one more time. Perfectly. Just go slow motion here now, and that will give you enough time to adjust to the position. So the key points, as I mentioned, hand inside and power control. As your partner tries to stand up, go ahead. As he gets the portion, look my hip here, what I do. I kind of bump my hip and I pull the collar down and I kind of, kind of break through that grip. Okay? Once I'm here, he tries to pull the arm out. See, I keep my elbow squeezing. I don't want to let him go lift me up indefinitely. So I start opening my legs and start kind of trying to favor getting my leg over his shoulder. Now here's a critical position because he still has both feet on the ground, so he can generate a lot of leverage to stand up. I'll switch the grip to the arm, go ahead, play, and I really try to circle behind him before he gets too much of an angle. As I don't know if you notice, he already lost his balance. Now, like I said, the best case scenario here is in case he does not attempt to roll over, I'm gonna keep my legs tight, knees facing away from my partner, sleeve and belt grip. I keep scooting my hip and try to get it flat. It, that's the best case scenario, leg flat finish. Now I redirect my knees towards his back. As I sit up, I force my other foot way back so I can push my hip forward. Okay, go back and stand up. If in the process here, stand up again. Stand up, lift me up, lift me up. Go ahead, lift me up. You see here what happens here? I have always to move behind him. And here, look, as my leg prevails over his elbow, over here, here he kind of fell into the position I wanted, but I wanted him to actually roll over a little bit. I follow him. See, this knee on the ground, keep going, keep going. And as I do it, look how I kind of adjust that leg. I, I don't stay with that foot on the ground all the time. Keep rolling to it. So I stretch and I circle around. You see, the arm is already gone. If I put a little bit more pressure here, that's actually at that. Okay? And let's assume here now, if for some reason he rolls all the way over, let's say you miss the shoulder lock. You're going here and he rolls. Go ahead and roll. Roll. You fall on top. That's fine. You're still in a good position. You're on the side mount. You can do a lot of things from here. So you're not going to be completely, you know, in a bad position by no means. Right now what we're going to see is a few options on how to properly finish the shoulder lock. Getting the position, the setup, is one half of the way. The other half is how you're going to maintain and eventually execute the position to the end. I compare an almost successful submission like somebody that swings close to the sand, close to the beach, and all of a sudden they run out of steam and sink in the ocean. So you don't want to spend all that effort trying to accomplish something to fall short when you're about to make it happen. Okay, that's why I'm going to spend some time describing the three main scenarios that you're going to encounter when you go for the shoulder lock. Once you finish that, I want to set aside three more situations for worst case scenario. That means you set up everything okay, but by the end of the position, your partner, partner eventually evades from the technique. So we're going to see also what to do then. You got to be ready, like I said, for any possibility. I'm going to invite again my dear student, Tim Burrell, and we're not, going to, we're not going to spend that much time explaining the techniques. My purpose right now, like I said, is work the finishing up, the ice on the cake. Excuse me. So, it doesn't matter so much how you start the position. What will be at this point important is how you end, okay? We've seen the start initially. So I'm going to kind of go for a simple one over here. Uh, I want to just call your attention for one single thing here that happens often. You see how my foot is within range uh, for Tim? Uh, some people actually get tapped on this position, and that's why I want to cover that. Tim, would you grab my ankle like a toe hold and put your forehead against my shin? Yeah, do you see here right now what happened there? 
he got a hold of my foot. He's going to put my foot in a very bad leverage here. As his head pushes forward, he can literally break my toe, break my ankle in that position. Okay, so when you're going for the shoulder lock, what is really important here is like try to keep that foot out of range of his grip. If he tries to go and grab it, go ahead. You try to kind of like keep that leg out, okay? Here, another thing you want to do is make sure that you keep the grip okay on the sleeve because a lot of times people tend to post their elbow on the ground because they are rushing to sit up so they can get the leverage to work. But in the process here, if Tim starts to move his shoulder, it's not that safe, go ahead, not that tight position here. So like I said, you don't want to swim you know, to the island and, and drown right before it happens. So you have the sleeve grip, so if he tries to pull now, go ahead, it's not as easy for him. The belt grip, of course, is a way for me to avoid him from rolling over. A lot of times when I pull the belt, go ahead, see I try to keep his hip from moving forward, okay? And we're going to see right now the first way to finish is called the leg flat, okay? As you notice here, if my legs are not flat, I have my feet posted on the ground, he has enough leverage to lift his shoulders off and start lifting my legs in the process. Go ahead, please. Keep lifting. See, so it kind of becomes very difficult for me to finish the position. Go back again. Once your leg is flat and actually facing away from your partner, if he tries to accomplish the same objective, go ahead. See, he has to fight a lot harder. And if I ever feel here that he's actually succeeding in lifting me up, I'll reposition my legs lower. I get my hip high, my leg goes lower on his elbow here. You see that? He has to come down, otherwise it's gonna hurt his elbow. Once I have him kind of flat on the ground, the leg flat works like this. I keep my knees tight over here. I sometimes cross my feet or keep my legs uncrossed, but my legs have to be flat. And I throw my hip and I keep dragging him as I go. Look, I pull him down as I move. Once his hip gets lower, and he got, kind of gets more flat on the ground. I'm gonna redirect my position by pointing my knee that's over the arm towards his shoulder. And I use the grip on the belt to help him sit up, okay? Most likely, the position should be like this. You see how his hand is actually inside my hip? That's what we call the Kimura hold, see? And once I'm here, I will post, okay? I do not hold the shin, which is how people used to do in the past. I have this grip to the end. What I need is posting the foot and moving forward until the leverage is far enough and then he starts feeling the pain. Okay? I'd like to cover one more scenario here real quick. If his hand for some reason stretches out, a lot of times what you can do too is squeeze your knees together a little bit and you grab the wrist. Okay, you grab the wrist, push the hand and do actually a wrist lock as you see here. It's like Pressure, 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 pressure. It becomes really hard. Or you can actually move your body out of the way and kind of secure the sleeve one more time and go to the original uh, submission that we've done earlier. So like I said, this is called the flat leg technique. Just rewinding the position. Starts here, I'm pointing out that way. I drag my hip, once it's flat, I redirect my knees, post my other foot on the ground, sleeve and belt control, move forward and finish the position, okay? Now I want to go over the knee pivot finish, which is, again, on all fours, please. When your partner actually, spin a little bit more, Tim, just turn on me, okay? When your partner actually, as you go for the position, he wants to roll on his shoulder. Okay, if I, if I don't act upon it right now, sometimes his hip is so heavy, that he's going to actually succeed in getting to this position. If he finishes rolling like that, the problem I have, I might try to get on top of him, I don't have the submission anymore, but as he keeps rotating towards me, his leverage is too overwhelming, I won't be able to sustain the grip control on the sleeve. Go back again. So I want you now to rewind the tape. Okay, so once I'm here, and I'm trying to go for the flat position, but I feel there is overwhelming pressure uh, when he tries to roll. See, I kind of sit up. This is the knee I'm gonna pivot on. I post this knee on the ground, keep going, keep going. I post my other foot. Do you see how I'm trying to actually move my body around his back? So if he tries to uh, insist on the roll, okay, he won't be able to get it. In the meantime, I still have the grip on the sleeve. 
this almost becomes not so much a shoulder lock squeeze anymore, but a straight arm bar. What I do here is like, you see how his arm's kind of straight? I keep the weight on his elbow, and once I get this knee on the ground, I post my other foot, and I gradually, see that's a tap right there. So, if you happen to be in a situation where everything is working for you, you're doing everything that you're supposed to do, and your partner throws the hip forward, trying to roll his shoulder, this knee, in this case, on the ground first, he has to have the sleeve grip, and I kind of circle around his back, and eventually I put this knee on the ground, both my other foot, and eventually, as you see, leverage is on, okay? Now, one last observation. In case your partner does roll, let's say I did everything according to the book, but I was not fast enough, and he rolled. I'm gonna try to roll with him, and as I do, a little bit, I try to keep the legs really tight against the arm squeezing here. Tie enough that if I feel he wants to pull the arm out, he's gonna have to struggle. It's not gonna be an easy way. You see how much he, I cannot keep this position for too long, because eventually he's gonna escape. So I have a small window of opportunity as I feel his elbow is trapped between my knees. All I need to do now, especially if he's not holding anything, I just grab his wrist and push the wrist straight to the ground. What happens here is like my calf is under his elbow. So as I drive his elbow, you know, his uh, wrist against the ground, the pressure increases to an armbar position. That's the position here that I like to do. The other one is in case his elbow is here. Okay, a lot of times I grab here. What I will do is I will kind of lean forward and I'll use my knee. So for a little more. My knee kind of like blocks the other side of his face. I kind of squeeze in here a little bit. See that? And I move my hip. Look how my hip motion. Go back one step. I kind of keep him tight over here. It's not a comfortable position by no means. He still has the grip. As you notice here, you see his grip there? I get the arm control. I kind of like use my foot on the ground to drag my hip. Look how my hip kind of pushes through his grip. He no longer has the grip. Now, all I want is to pass my hip under his elbow. So once my hip starts going under the elbow, I lock over into a triangle-like hole, and I have the armbar ready to go. So staying there, just going back one step. Okay, here I am, re reversing the position. I was here. Okay, I finished rolling on top of the guy. I have the control. So I kind of trap his head between my knees. See how I'm squeezing here? Now in this position here, what do I do? I kind of stretch the bottom leg in this case, and I drag my hip against his body. Once he's here, he tries to pull the arm, so keep kind of, look how my leg kind of grabs his back, cool? See, it's not as easy as you see it. I still don't have the angle to get the leg over the head, so I need here to scoot my hip under his elbow a little bit so I can get the control here. Here I can push against the leg, I can push straight, and I have a solid position. If he ever insists in coming over on top of me and he does accomplish that, go ahead. I open my legs right away and I put him right back into the same situation. Flat leg if I can. I want you to roll over again, Tim. I'm gonna kind of freeze with you. I corner my legs and I follow him. And here, lo and behold, I'm back to the same reverse arm bar that I worked earlier on. Or sometimes even from here, let's say the arm is not in a favorable position. Hold the arm, trap the head, okay? You can kind of work on the elbow a little bit. Move, okay, you kind of go, adjust the position as it goes. Back over, finish him up. One last scenario when the person rolls over, and at this point you're not gonna finish him on an arm bar the way I described the two situations earlier on, but you're gonna actually keep rolling until you put him back into the shoulder lock. This is a drill that's very interesting, and you, you use a lot of mat space in order to accomplish that. Envision yourself starting on one spot of the mat, and as it rolls, you kind of roll along with him. So I want to show you the drill here. Come over here for a second more time. Just uh, stay on the shoulder lock position. We're gonna actually need more space, move back. Thank you. So you start from here, let's say here, I'm going for the setup, one and two. As I go, I feel he rolls. 
So as you roll, I kind of go with him. I grab his elbow, okay, over here, with that hand, just on the ground. Move my shoulder, look how my legs work. He, you, I don't want you to fall, you just say that. My leg works as a pendulum here. And as I bring him back, actually right now he's much closer to the submission than he thinks because as you see, his shoulder's gonna land on the ground before he's able to do anything. A lot of times, this is how you're gonna end when you roll along with your partner. You're gonna have actually the option of holding both arms. And once I have that sleeve grip, you know that the submission is near. So like I said one more time, we're gonna kind of play one more time the position. I'm already with the shoulder. I'll let my partner roll. As he does, I keep everything tight over here. This hand in this case is gonna kind of grab the elbow while my other hand helps me roll. As I go here, and sometimes I hold the elbow or the seat, I kind of like use the elbow, so you can kind of work here in the elbow. Do a little pendulum. Do you see how here actually I capture him over here? Move. Boom. Right back. So here, basically, turn your head with me. This is a fun game. So here right now, get up a little bit. Get up, get up, get up. Okay, roll with me, roll with me. Oh. If I move my hip before it happens, oh, I have it right here. Boom, ready to go. And pretty much, I can just train retargeting. So you shot your ammunition, you need to reload, I'm sorry, reload your weapon, stop here, get back one step earlier, let your partner roll, as he does, switch the elbow in on the ground, as you lift him up, control him, okay, let him roll, one more time. Just playing with this game, it's fun, it's relaxing, but the way Tim and I are practicing the drill is not to see who gets who, but how we enhance our skills in order to be effective when you go in competition or serious training. When you attack the shoulder from the guard, you're not aiming only the submission. A lot of times you, your opponent will feed you into a reversal situation. And I like to address at least three different occasions where it will be easier for you to go for a reversal or shoulder lock flip instead of trying to insist on the submission. As you know, Jiu Jitsu is not about fighting hard, fighting, fighting strength. It's about being flexible and try to do the best you can with what your partner feeds you. So, Tim and I, we're gonna cover here. First, the basic shoulder, shoulder lock flip that I'm sure you have seen before if you are a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fanatic, as I and Tim. But uh, I'm gonna kinda include a few details that I hope are new and make it, will make your game more effective. Here we go. As you've seen earlier, you have the option if your legs are tight enough to try a reverse armbar on this position, or if your partner is fighting too hard to fight, you know, you defend the arm, you just relax and try to stabilize on the side mount. Your objective at this point was not so much the submission, but to get to a more controlling position. Review again, one more time. Yeah, the close guard shoulder lock flip setup usually works well when your partner starts standing up, gives more space. I try to keep my hips, you know, tie against his waist, so if he tries to lift me up, he's gonna be heavy for him. He cannot get a posture right away. And at the same time, I'm gonna try to kind of work to kind of push his arm out of the way a little bit. If he has a grip here, what I do, I keep my hand on the sleeve and I kind of use my fist to kind of spread his arm out and I switch the grip. Now I go for the leg and I try to work my shoulders closed first so when I open my leg, 
My objective here is to escape my leg, spin a little bit, I squeeze my knees together, and before I flip them, I do a little lift. Because Tim here has a, a lot of base, he's gonna try to fight either pulling his arm out, see, so I kinda post my weight on my head, and once I go down, as his weight goes forward, all of a sudden, I switch directions. So I face to the side, he passes over my hip like a hip throw, and I follow up with the position, and eventually, stabilize on the side mount. Working now with some of the submissions that we worked uh, shoulder lock wise, you're gonna see here for instance, just a basic setup while my partner is not yet standing up. I'm going foot on the hip, bump my hip, get my knees inside, secure the collar, bump my knee under the elbow. As I'm going here for the shoulder and I do the switch, sleeve and belt, all of a sudden, he knows his shoulder is in trouble, so he starts to put his weight against it. As you know, I try always to face away my partner. In this case, as I feel his hip is all over me, believe me, you want to make sure that his legs don't pass over your head. In case I don't keep like my hand blocking, and this, you know, he will kind of step over, and this will affect how I maintain the position. Go back one more time, please. So once you're here, if you ever try to attempt the same thing, you see how my arm is kind of like, I really kind of insist. Just turn around for a second here. I really try to insist in keeping my elbow and my shoulders, everything on the way. Now when I get a hold of his belt, if his weight still remains on my hip, what I will do is I will kind of pass my shoulder under my body here and I'll rotate my hip. Look, I elevate and I throw my hip against it. Boom, like a hip throw. Once it falls, See, I end up on the side and finish with a side mount control. <clears throat> we have one more uh, variation to work with. What the hell is it? Two more? Yes. Like uh, I'm gonna attack, I'm gonna stand up. As you do it, I'm gonna kind of set you up for an attack I worked earlier on. I trap the arm and I start working towards uh, the shoulder lock. In this position here, Tim is gonna really fight hard not to allow me uh, to get the shoulder, okay? Instead of trying to circle behind me, I'll catch the ankle, spin a little bit, and look how this leg here works as a pin. One thing here that will help take his base away, besides the pressure that I keep here on his leg, is keep the pressure of the other leg under the armpit really heavy on the elbow here. See here? Then I rotate to the side, flip them over, my legs are tight, establish the knees on the floor, and eventually go to the side mount. Let's do that once more. Collar control, hand inside the wrist, partner stands up. Trap the arm, push the face, climb your leg behind the shoulder, control the sleeve, trap the leg, spin, stretch, look how my hip stretches up and down. Every time his weight is on top of me here, up and down. One thing here is like sometimes when his knee blocks my hip, it might prevent me from performing the position. A lot of times actually what I'll do is kind of face away. I pass my elbow over his knee. Go back again one time. So here, as you see, I'm kind of like in a stalemate right now here because I want to take him down, but this knee here is pushing against my chest. So I really have to get rid of it. I get rid of it. Now, a lot of times, once I get that arm through around his knee, I can actually start setting up the submission. But since he's trying to prevent me from getting the angle by chasing me with his hip, what I'm gonna do is roll my shoulders, throw my hip, and take him down. Once I'm here, side mount. And remember, once you're on the side mount and your partner keeps the arm in this Kimura angle over here, okay? I'm gonna first post my elbow against his shoulder and I can now lift my chest off his body without being concerned about him turning over towards me. Go ahead, Tim. See, I can kind of keep enough weight on his shoulder and he's gonna stay flat for a little bit. Time enough from my other elbow to kind of bump under his wrist and give me the space to trap his arm. 
Once I do that, hand on the ground, control the arm, elbow in front of the stomach, and as it tries to move whichever direction, I keep my shoulder putting pressure down against his arm here. And once I'm there, I want to step eventually behind his back to go for the armbar. So hand on the ground, step the leg first so you can get closer to where you want to be, secure the leg, okay? Make another deep step, you see how I close again? And as you step the other leg, make sure that your other leg will beat his arm by stepping kind of under his armpit. And once you're here, you successfully finish with a full armbar.
points of the footage you just saw. And I was trying to emphasize initially the simple sweep or what they call scissor sweep from the guard. I had my right hand in the lapel, my left arm controlling his elbow, and once I unlocked my feet, I always dance with my hip. Okay, I always dance with your hip, and I went right away into the scissor angle. What's important in this position in order for you to succeed is as you go, you have to shift your partner's weight off his legs. The shoulder control is very important here. And here I don't let his uh, arm touch the ground. So here, as I go for the reversal, as you see, I get the position up to the point where I mount. Just a word of advice when you mount, do not touch your knee on the ground. You try to keep your foot kind of like based, posted on the ground because most of the time your partner is going to use your momentum and roll along with you and you might actually lose your position there or he actually will take advantage of the fact that you have your knee posted on the ground and start pushing that leg and trap you inside his legs or half guard, okay? So when you want to build the momentum for this position, like I said, you have a good control here, okay? You go back. If I'm flipping him that way, I kind of dance with my hip, moving this way first. I keep my shoulder on the ground, my hip never touches. Turn a little bit. As I get out here, my knee starts lifting him up with my arm pulling, okay? And here I apply pressure to get his shoulder and weight off me. Eventually, I apply the scissor, and like I said, Fist on the ground, foot on the ground, sink your elbow against the chest. You don't want to give him the option of hiding his hand inside because this eventually will turn into a choke hold, which basically here, once I get the position established, establish my balance, I get my left thumb inside, I open the lapel as wide as I can, I sink both my hands deeper, and here, once you want to choke, you drop your knee on the ground, forehead on the ground, and as you pull the lapel, try to, if you have a roll, try to roll, you go ahead, you move your head. You see how I move my head apart? That gives me enough balance to sustain the, the choke until he taps out. Anybody that keeps the head too close to your partner's ear, in this case here, go ahead and move. See, it's very hard for me to maintain the balance, okay? So go back one time. Once I get the choke, See, he tries to roll, so I spread my knees a little bit, and I keep moving my head away. Going back for the simple sweeper here, one element that took place was, as I was going for the position here, back and forth, uh, he actually posted his hand on the ground. See, he was able to post the hand. And that kind of prevents me from fully getting the leverage. I immediately sit and follow up with a Kimura hold. Okay, here I have the best case scenario. Okay, I already have his leg trap. If I put my back on the ground and I can keep his hand above his back, that's a submission. All I need to do is move my hip, okay? And I get my leg high on the hip and I push until he taps out. When we were training though, Tim felt the danger. So going back again, one more time, scoot back for a second, Tim, please. Stay a little higher on your knees for a second. Okay, one and two. I'm going for the sweep. Once I went for the arm, he actually held his knee. Go ahead. See, so there was some resistance there, I felt. Plus, he kept all his weight on the mat. So it's too much effort for me to try to pull his arm out and try to face him. So instead, what I did, I used his momentum and I started to roll on top of him. At one point in time, though, he posted his hand on the ground trying to regain his balance. Once that took place, I actually tried to take advantage of this moment and go right back into it. And if I did have his wrist above the back, probably I would be able to finish him right here. But he was still able to get that hand inside, so I decided to go on top. He kept pushing my legs, see, and eventually he was able to escape, but I tried to disengage from the position and not fall into his guard, okay? <clears throat> I'd like to show uh, two more elements on the simple sweep that can make a difference in terms of making it easier for you when someone, with somebody like Tim, that has such an experience, laces, you know, 
enough resistance that your feet won't be able to do it. So when you do the back and forth motion, one of the things you can do once you get here is move your shoulder high, move your hip high, and you're gonna use that foot to start spreading his leg out. As you stretch the leg, you start stretching your body and pulling the elbow up. And here eventually your knee coils and your leg kicks against the hip, okay? Go back one more time. So, the fact that you don't succeed with a simple sweep right away, especially when somebody keeps the knees spread out like this, his base is really strong. So I'm going back and forth. Once I go here and I feel like there's no way I can lift him up, shoulder high, hip movement, foot feets. It is important here that I don't let go this uh, leg, I'm using this arm. Now here, I will lift my knee. I don't kick right away. He, he's not gonna go right now. You see how his weight's still based on his knee. I lift him with my knee, and then I kick with my shin. Boom. Once he's there, on top, and remember what I told you, foot on the ground, okay? Elbow on the ground. I'd like just to give you a little overview on the submissions from the mount, since we end up here often from the simple sweep. Okay, my elbow inside is very important, like I said, because if he gets his hand inside, he blocks my choke. Now, once he gets this position, I can actually take advantage of his arm and let go of the lapel, and I use my elbow to actually ride his arm to the floor, okay? Once he's in this position here, I'm gonna go grab underneath, and here I have one observation again about the grip. Uh, stretch your arm out, stretch, stretch, stretch. You see how his arm stretching out, go back. If I hold with my hand, stretch out again. See, see how hard it is? I might even be able to tap him in a straight arm bar, but what I do, I do not use my hands. Face it, just a little bit on this way. Here what I do, I will kind of use my wrist, go ahead, stretch, 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 stretch. Look how my hands uh, work, I turn, my palm, I keep the back of my hand and wrist against his hand, go ahead, stretch. He can stretch at best a little bit, but his arm is still flexed. Do you see how I'm holding my forearm? And eventually from here, I can actually add the pressure, I'm sorry, enough that he'll tap out. So, I had the grip. Initially, see this is the position I want. I'm sinking my uh, foot against his hip, I'm squeezing my knees against his chest, and I'm keeping my elbow heavy, okay? I wanna make sure he doesn't roll me or push my leg too fast, okay? I wanna get that call and choke him. If I ever gave space, I wanna review that again. And once more, he got his hand inside, I get my elbow, okay, square a little bit, start driving him, and I can do a little bit of help with his hand, okay? One, two. Once his arm is there, and he tries to stretch, look, my hand already waiting, go ahead. See here, my hand kinda stops right on the wrist. Okay, and eventually here, I go and finish him off, okay? Going back to the submission, sometimes this arm is gonna be a little bit on the way when he turns sideways, okay, turns sideways a little bit. So I'm trying to get the angle to choke him, to go for the choke, but the arm is on the way. So what I will do is, I will use first my hip, okay, pushing forward a little bit. Do you see how his arm moves? I put a little bit of pressure on his shoulder. I wanna get the arm wide. Now here, keep your arm tight. A lot of times people have a roadblock in this position. My goal is to get this elbow, let go for a second, right here, okay? But in order for me to accomplish that with resistance, I, need, I cannot just push, okay? Keep that resistance there. What I do, I grab his arm, and I literally lift his shoulder off the mat. Look how much I pull him. Yeah, resist a little bit more. Look, I lift him out, off the mat. See my body here? See, so I lift him out, lift him up, I'm sorry. Boom, now I hide the elbow inside. Once I'm there now, I'm good to go. Lock the head, bring your other foot higher. I love to do the clamp. Pull the other elbow up, clamp your calf, okay? He's fully trapped. Step over, and you have the arm, okay? If there is any problem here, stretching the arm out because he has a grip, feed your lapel high, fist on the ground like a punch, because you want to get your hip off the mat and sink your hip under his shoulder, okay? Once you're here now, you're going to try to kind of tilt your arm, let your hip look. My hip pushes his shoulder. You see how his arm is giving? Eventually I can add my second hand and stretch him out, okay? 
I'd like to just go over the, this last detail one more. This is a release from the arm. One more time, hold tight, okay? Anytime there's space between my hip and shoulder, I'm expending a lot of effort here. Feed the lapel, punch against the ground, lift your hip off, get your hips screwed under the shoulder, chest open, okay? Eventually here also I like to do this. This is called, a, it's like a bicep lock right now. I put my hip forward and I pull his arm. He's already tapping, actually. See the forearm under his elbow? When I put this pressure down, a lot of times the guys tap or let go. Then I go, finish him off. Going back to the scissor sweep or simple sweep, there are points in this position that you feel you, you no won't be able to progress. We're here right now, you feel like you can't go any further, especially when the guy tries to pull his weight away from you. Basically what I want you to do is a little exercise with your hip. The outside leg kind of rests on your partner's thigh, and I want you to place your hip level with his knee. Okay, in this case, his right knee. So I kind of put my hip that way, and now I'll do a pendulum with my head. I won't stop the motion. I kind of sit up and pendulum. This position here allows me to build momentum to drag his shoulder and kick my legs. Okay? So if you are going for the simple sweep, and at one point in time, you get into a stalemate here, you cannot go any further, rest your leg a little higher, bump your hip and post your hip out a little bit, and you kind of do a sit-up, moving your head first. That kind of, you see how that motion here drags his weight a little bit. The grip on the shoulder will help. Okay, so once I go here, I kind of kick my leg and sit with the other one, and eventually, I'll end up on top. Okay? So just one more reminder on the position. One, two, one, Okay. Since we are here right now, I want to actually cover a position that sometimes is neglected and it can cause you a lot of problems. Is when your partner, as you go to the top mount position, traps one of your legs. Okay. This position requires immediate reaction. Okay. If I stay here longer than I should, He's going to start regrouping his defense. Keep moving, Timmy. Get back in the guard. See, he's kind of getting an angle where he can attack my back, put me back inside his legs, or actually start building a very strong uh, stance that will affect my control and possibly put me in a bad position. So if for some reason I was on the top mount, I was trying to keep my base, and at this point he was able to push my leg and trap it, I'll let go and try to be as low as I can. Keep moving, Timmy. My first concern is to establish the cross face, if I can. I'll try to stop him here, okay? When you do the cross face, there's a second element that you're gonna have to really pay attention, is, as you see my leg here, this knee I call the elbow killer. This is his elbow, I wanna kill his elbow, okay? And also I'm gonna chase his hip, a lot of times, his next goal, once I'm here, is to actually push that knee and come with the second. Just put me back in the garden for now. Put the second knee back in the garden. There you go. That's what I'm concerned about at this point. Go back. Even if he did decide to grab my leg, which a lot of times it happens, the cross face usually will help you out in this position here. If he tries to progress into the position, but if he tries to push me back into his legs, I'm susceptible. Okay? so. Once you're right here in this position, you always chase the hip. Go ahead and move a little bit. I kind of try to get him flat. Do you see that? Stay sideways, please. Every time he's sideways, I, I kind of get him flat. Turn around now. Now look how I use my knee. As I get him flat, I keep putting him in the guard. Go ahead. See how I can squeeze my knee against his thigh? Over here. And my objective here is what? To be that elbow. Do you see that? Go back again. So anytime I'm here, I chase my head, chase. Sometimes I use my hand a little bit, let go of the cross face, and kind of help. Turn it off for a second. Try to help kind of like alleviate a little bit the pressure of his elbow so I can scoot my knee inside and neutralize that arm. Please, do not make the mistake 
of keeping this arm in a bad angle, that means with your elbow up, because some guys will actually go for the Kimura from here. And here, believe it or not, some people will get you tapped out. Go ahead, slow. See here, the position here, I like. I was in such a great position. So you cut your elbows kind of close to your body, you're just using your hands barely. So here I'm changing him and eventually get my knee in. Once I establish that, turn around with me now, my shoulder is gonna go under his chin and put as much pressure on his neck as I can. Okay, go ahead. I really wanna make him think about his neck and it's his life. You know, I'm not trying to tap him out, but he can actually get tapped if he insists on facing this way. So his reaction will be up as I get the pressure to kind of face away just to alleviate his neck. I'm trying to always chase. If he ever moves his hip, go ahead. I always match his move. move. And as I do it, go ahead. I always try to work my, my arm to push his leg. My objective here is to get my leg out, either to mount or get my leg and stay across on the side now. So once I'm here, one of the things I'll have to be concerned about will be his arm blocking my legs. And that's like how far I can go before I start changing a little bit the position, okay? Basically here, move over a little bit here. Basically here in this position, see, I can intercept his arm a little bit. Go ahead, use your arm. And I always keep my knee heavy on the, on the leg, okay? I want you to pay attention that if the guy ever tries to move the hip in this position, go ahead, move your hip. See, a lot of times as he does, he gives me the chance to kick my leg out. He's not too concerned about stopping me from mounting. He's trying to regain his hip angle. So this happens a lot. But if you ever insist on keeping my leg trapped, the cross face, as I intercept his arm here, turns into a choke. Okay, you kind of let go of the cross face, get your thumb inside the lapel, and actually here I, I do try to tap my partner out with a choke hold. If he faces the ceiling, the pressure becomes so strong that he will eventually tap out. He has one option, which is to face away from the choke. He's gonna turn that way now. And as he does, he gives me more and more angle to get my knee out and eventually establish the top mount, okay? So just refreshing a little bit. I was already on the mount from the simple sweep. And for some reason, I didn't put enough pressure there. I didn't stop him from moving. As soon as he gets me there, go ahead. See, I get my heavy chest, cross face. Remember the, the elbow killer here? He's using the elbow here. I get, get my knee to push his leg, and then I beat his elbow, okay? Now, once I have all that, see, I keep moving. See, I, I kind of push my foot on the ground, move, move, push, knee against the leg. Okay, and now it's time to switch. Cross face to choke. Okay, pressure, pressure, pressure. Pull the elbow, boom. Get the position out, all right? The choke also allows you, in case he's ever high, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm high and he's low. See here, I don't have the cross face right now and I'm in a really bad position. He's kind of getting my back a little bit. Okay, so once you are in this position, move a little bit, Tim. See, I try to stop his head first, go ahead. Stop his head, space him a little bit. Always try to keep him down, see? See, try to stay here, put him in the guard if you can. See, see that knee, kind of squeezing there. I'm trying here to make sure that I stay lower than him enough that I can get my arm out. Do you see that? Go back again one time. When we started, he was way ahead of me, okay? Normally, I don't wait for my partner to be this low. Okay, go back one step. Usually, as soon as he starts getting his arm under, I start going for the neck. See, I pin, then I start, you know, keep his head pinned. Go ahead. Get my arm out. And here, see, he's kind of sideways. Turn around a little bit. Look that knee, that keep moving. See how that knee and the cross face getting flat? Okay, very good. Turn around again one time. Good job. Now here is all about getting your knee out. Once you neutralize the arm, don't let him go back to your leg. Go ahead. So you keep blocking there. Get the choke. Choke, 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 choke. Boom. Top mount. Now I would like to
like to spend some time describing what we call the plier flip. Basically, this position happens when the partner stands up, okay? It is important for me, to a happy point, to keep control over his elbows or sometimes the sleeve, okay? The elbow is my first choice, but sometimes I'll stay here, okay? I do not allow him to use his hands at all. Once he gets his stance, I will lock my feet. I kind of like lift my hip. You see how I post all my weight on my head? I kind of dance with my hips a little bit and my legs gradually slide right behind his calves below his knee, okay? In that position there, turn around for a second, please, Tim. I'm going to see the from here now. Keep your legs wide for a second. Do you see now that my feet don't, don't touch each other? Okay, now here I do a, like a, a pendulum with my head to the right, and I squeeze his knee. Then I do a pendulum to the left, and I squeeze his other knee. So his knees are closer together. Now I can cross. Once you cross, you squeeze, okay? You're gonna keep your knees separated a little bit more. If at any point you feel you cannot squeeze enough because your partner's legs are too strong, you kind of bump your hip a little bit and kind of move out of the way. You see that? That kind of makes him weaker. My first choice in this case is to flip him to my left, okay? So I'm gonna change the angle here so you can see how the hip maneuver works. Go ahead. So going back from this angle again, open your legs, tight, right? So here I go, look, head movement, pull one leg. Keep that pressure, head movement, pull the other leg. Cross your feet, hip up and down, hip and shoulder. You see that, I move out of the way, I pull him to me and I kind of help him come. Now, a word of advice here is like, don't let your partner hammer against the ground because it kind of hurts the shoulder. This position, it's like a high fall. Okay, so here, as I help him go, I kind of keep my, I'm sorry, Timmy. I kind of keep my arm blocking his fall to make sure I buffer the impact a little bit. As he falls, I, I fall on top, and my objective, if I can, is to prevent his knees from separating. Okay, go back again. So once I'm here, I'm gonna sink all my weight down. Okay, keep my elbows squeezing. Okay, and here, see how my feet are moving back and forth. I kind of like turn around. So here, what I'm trying to establish is, see if I can get my feet here. You see how my foot is kind of blocking the leg? That's when I eventually step up. I start working to get the side, and the arm control that I have, I drag the arm, I keep my elbow as heavy as I can. See, I can even help with my other arm to kind of get it flat, stabilized, okay? Going back again one more time. Let's see another angle. So, partner stands up. See, once I open, look, my hips elevate, I'm all on my head. See, at this point in time, I kind of kept squeezing my calves a little faster, so I was able to actually track my feet, okay? Remember to move your shoulder, squeeze his leg, shoulder in here, shoulder in here. Turn around a little bit. His legs are completely tied up together. That's good for me. One observation during the training earlier uh, on the DVD, Tim knew I wanted to flip him that way. I was actually set to do that. He kind of set his weight back the other way. So what I did, I felt he was already falling. I just went with him. And as I did it, see, I tried to rotate my hip and catch the momentum in order to stabilize. If for some reason, his knees break out, okay, you get out, okay, and circle. Okay, moving your head and try to get on the side. My first option, go ahead again one time, is to keep his knees stacked up together with my hip and have upper body control. I'm here, turn around for a second here. Okay, open your knees, open your knees. See, I always try to change his knees, okay? Eventually here, I kick my leg out and get to the side. If for some reason though, he spreads his knees and square with me, I disengage, already working on his legs. Move out of the way, use my hand as a third arm and eventually establish the control, okay? One quick variation of the flyer in terms of how you finish is 
almost like a, go ahead again one time. See how you stretch, bend a little, squeeze. Some guys like to use the, the toes or the foot under the guy's head. They kind of kick the guy high and they really move the guy high enough. Look how high he is. If he doesn't put his hands on the ground, he might collapse. See, but here right now, look, he gave me a lot of grab on his legs. So sometimes I kind of pivot and, and bounce my hip so I can generate leverage to roll him this way, go back. Or sometimes I get here and I pivot back the other way. Okay? In any instance, he is way higher than me. Just one more time. One more angle. Stand up. See? One, two, three, four. Kick, 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 kick. Push him up. Get the legs. See, I squeeze everything. When I want to rotate, I'll bounce my hip and, and pull my shoulder out. Still keeping control there on the leg. See, go back on stack. Turn, turn around, turn around, turn around. Just face your hip to the camera. Turn your knees. When you're here in this position, I want you to remember to use your foot. Okay, when you kind of, when you flip it, use your foot here to try to help pull. Okay? And you finish them off. The next reversal we're going to see is called the ankle pick uh, hook flip. And basically here, my partner is going to stand up. As he does, he gets a good posture. Before he get go ahead, keep moving. I'll try to always maintain control on one of his arms. Okay? I cannot allow him to have two arms free at any time. And here I'm going to work my other uh, hand against his knee. Okay? to kind of get space for my foot. I want to actually block his hip. I cannot underestimate the importance of using this hand. Go back one step. If for some reason I wanted to post my foot on his hip without blocking his knee first, he can actually base his leg and elbow. And here, as you see, it closes. The angle, I have no way to penetrate my heel, my foot against his hip. So I'm actually in a very bad spot right now. Go back from the beginning one more time. So I'm here playing with my partner, he stands up. See, I, see how I kind of like set up the sleeve grip? I kind of just keep my thumb here, get the sleeve, you know, strong enough that he cannot pull out right away. And here, I kind of keep my weight on my head. I don't know if you notice, my, my back does not rest on the ground for too long. And I pose here. If you ever try to use that leg now to do the same uh, position that he did earlier. You see how I kind of block his knee enough that I can fit my foot against the hip. Okay. Once that happens, you're gonna have to recover that arm right away because it's gonna be fighting to get that arm out. And my other foot will get busy blocking the, the shoulder. You know, work against his leg until I can catch the ankle. Okay. Most of the time, if you feel the leg is too far, move your head first. Okay, move your head first and then eventually you're gonna catch it. I always like to cover the gap between my hip and his foot. So just turn a little bit more side. Stop there for a second. So I kind of go here. Boom. Okay, and I keep immediate pressure on his hip. For instance, here he can base, 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 base. Yeah. See how he's kind of like his posture is really strong. I'm about to lose everything here. Go back again. So once I have that foot on the hip, see I start to pull the ankle and push you know, the hip, I push his other leg out just a little to get his base more spread, and then I hook, you know, the foot under his opposite leg. Now here, what all you need to do is not put too much pressure, is just to make his foot slide a little bit. He collapses on, on his hip, okay, and I pull my leg out, I don't keep my leg there, pull my leg out, get into the stance where I can now charge my weight forward, eventually in a square angle, okay? So going back again one time, Here right now. Good. So we're standing up. Here. One and two. Okay. Three and four. Control here. Okay. Five. Pressure. Push. Hook. Um. The position we worked right before the plier flip sometimes combines well into this situation. How does that happen? 
uh, you're going to see here that I have control over both of his arms, and actually, I'm going for the plier. Go ahead. So once I'm there, see one and two, I crossed. Sometimes as I'm going for the position, right before I, I was able to accomplish my, if I can cross my foot, that's what I need. He steps back one leg. Do you see that there? So that changes the game. I cannot use the ply anymore. So I immediately go back to the sleeve, go back to the foot on the hip, and go back to the hip and pick. Close the gap, push his other leg. Here's that hook, spread out his foot, and take him down, okay? Let's see another angle one more time. Go that way now. So my partner's gonna stand up, and as soon as I try to go for the plier, he steps back on leg. See that, I switch right away. Push his leg, get the foot, get the ankle, push, hook, pull. I'd like right now to cover situations from the top mount. And why do I do that? A lot of times when you start from the guard uh, and you succeed reversing your opponent, that's going to be a very common scenario. You're going to end up on the top mount. So team is going to lie down. Okay. Basically here, I'm going to try to focus my goal into three attacks. I'm going to attack his arm in two different ways and his neck. In order for me to accomplish that though, I need to have enough control to maintain the position long enough where eventually I can apply a submission hold. So don't get rushy if you don't have anything uh, when you start them out. Your main concern initially is to stay on top. Okay, here I can tell already that when you are high like this, you're very susceptible. Like your partner can just grab your belt here and just by pushing your stomach and bumping his hip, he's gonna rotate and scoot out. It's very hard for me to maintain my legs grasping on his body. So you wanna eventually for control, try to keep your arms spread out, so your weight heavy on the chest. And here your legs, should always try to kind of grab his hip. You see, it's like I have a spur and I'm sinking against the horse. It's like horseback riding. Imagine you're having a horse that bucks and you don't want to fall from the horse. That's how riding the top mount feels. So here, the two things I'm concerned about is, first, of course, being rolled over. Anytime I keep my hands on my partner's body, I give him grip. Go ahead, hold. So that makes it more difficult for me if he ever tries to roll me that way as he elevates me. Go ahead. See, and he starts rolling. This I'm alone will not hold it. Go back again. So I usually don't commit my hands. If I ever decide to use my hands for an attack, I will actually work on the lapel. Okay, over here. Usually you use your hands to defend a little bit there, go ahead. I have to I kind of open space. The call is like a rain. See here, I am the one, I have to show who is the boss from the start. So I have this control here initially. Go ahead, move a little bit. See, my arms spread out really wide, my legs tight, okay? Anytime, go back, move again one time. Anytime I feel his elbow, you see his elbow is inside my knee. If he flats his leg and he starts pushing my knee, he's gonna open space to trap my leg. Go back. So as he goes for that position, I immediately get my knee off the mat. See, I cannot maintain the top mount with both knees on the ground for the entire time. I kind of shift depending which way he faces and which elbow he wants to use. So going back again. When I'm here and he faces that way and uses the elbow, my knee automatically lifts off the mat. That gives room for my hand to kind of kind of circle underneath his elbow. So he tries to use the elbow, now go ahead. I pull his elbow and I recover the, the top mount, the position. I can now put my knee down without a problem. If he tries to do the same thing towards the other side, go ahead. As you see, my knee's off the ground already, and I'm already grabbing his elbow as he proceeds with the position. A lot of times, I use my foot against the floor to actually push my weight against him. Move a little bit. Look how I can kind of lift him and put his weight back on the floor. 
okay? Once I go and decide to attack the neck, which is gonna be our first option, okay? I will kind of like, keep your posture there for a second. I kind of open the lapel and I slide my hand inside his hand, okay, over here. Okay, go deep, as deep as I can. My elbow should not be too elevated. Some uh, students, by lack of experience, when they have a strong grip on the lapel, if they keep too strong of a grip, your partner can actually push your elbow and you actually gonna hurt yourself, you know, as it goes for the position. So, as soon as you grab the lapel, your elbow turns in. No matter what he tries to do, go ahead. See, it's, it's a very strong position here. And I like, always, whenever I grab his lapel, my other hand immediately touches the ground, okay? And I will get one knee off the ground, the other knee pushing forward a little bit. Do you see here? My head is no longer aligned with his head. My head is aligned with his shoulder. That's how you ride. Now, if you ever try to roll me, go ahead. Look how much weight he has to fight. Plus I have that foot on the ground. Okay, go ahead. See here, I can't, in, my elbow is sinking his chest on the ground. If he does insist in rolling me too much from this position, he actually gonna expose his arm. So I slide my knee behind his back and I already have his elbow exposed. I don't have to let go of the grip. I just post my hand on the ground, step the leg over the face, and I can go for an armbar finish. But most of the time, when you have somebody with some experience, they're not gonna go right away, okay? So they're not gonna try to insist on the roll when they feel you don't, you don't give it to them. Here, if I do decide to go for the choke, it is a fast situation. I cannot just take too long, because if I just take my time and grab him here, he can actually trap that hand, go ahead, and start rolling it this way. Go back. Excuse me. So what I do is I kind of, I kind of, I'm checking out the lapel. I want to go for that and I'll switch, switch my weight as I go. But what I do initially is like my thumb, my thumb, my arm over the first grip, first grip just to the fingers, okay? Elbow tight here to avoid him from getting his hand inside. Go ahead. So, if, you know, right here, yes, see, the hand there is blocked. And, and now I just open up the lapel. See, I want to make sure I have plenty of room for my grip, okay? Now, when I decide to sink my hand deep inside the neck, well, as I go deep, I don't tie up right away, I just keep my hand relaxed, and I will relax also the other grip. Do you see that? I relax the other grip, so I can go both grips deep, deep. The deeper, the better, okay? You wanna get, if you can, by the ear or beyond the ear, as deep as you can, so you can get the arteries locked when you apply the pressure. Once I have the grip deep enough, it is okay for me to drop both of my knees down, but since I don't have my hands to post anymore, in order to avoid the rollover, I have to post my forehead. And the way I do it, I use a mobile forehead posting. For instance, I start here first. If he ever tries to roll me, I move my head further out. Do you see that? So if he insists on the position, See, I can still maintain a lot of control, and in the meantime, the pressure of the choke will be on. I'm gonna be turning my wrist and pulling his head towards my chest without giving any slack, any space, and just spreading out the collar. Okay, I'm gonna tap you out more slow, okay? So here you're trying to escape, go ahead. Okay? That's how fast the position takes place. It's like, you know, <clears throat> Okay, so the choke hold, like I said, you need to shift your weight. Your head initially is aligned with, with his head. As soon as you grab the lapel, keep moving a little bit, you switch your weight like this, look at that. My hand is here, I'm not going anywhere. My elbow is sunk against the chest. I kind of eyeball the other lapel. I kind of go for the, if he ever has the hand there, it's not a problem. You can pass your elbow through it. Kind of smash the hand a little bit, open up and then sink. Once you sink, knee down, head down, he tries to roll, forehead spreads out. In the meantime, you keep the pressure until he taps out.